Hello there my RPG lovers and welcome to another video. There is one particular RPG in my Steam library that's quietly sitting there and judging me for not playing it. But Pathfinder Kingmaker is not the main topic of this video, it's actually its sequel, Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Owlcat Games is the sponsor of this video by the way, they asked me to check the game out and make a couple of videos about it. I would do that regardless of the sponsorship because I had plans to cover this game when it comes out but there you go. If you're going to buy Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, use the link I provided in the description and by doing so you'll support the channel. But anyway, after about 20 hours with the game, these are my complete first impressions. If you're not familiar with this series, Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous is a party-based RPG set in the Pathfinder universe. While Kingmaker focused on building a kingdom, Wrath of the Righteous is centered around the role of Commander of the Fifth Crusades. One of the main appeals for the Pathfinder system is the extensive class selection and a rich character customization in general. That would be a good starting point for my first impressions, so let's talk about it. The game has 25 classes and 15 unique races. But that's just one of the important choices that you have to make when creating your character. I've spent around 40 minutes in the character creation menu, even though the character I had in mind is very simple. Two-handed sword wielding warrior, who's actually quite charming. Now look, a well-designed user interface is extremely important in these kinds of games which have plethora of information, otherwise it could be really easy to get overwhelmed. Especially if you don't have a lot of experience with CRPGs and you want to get into this genre. But even with a great UI presentation and the design in general, you can still get overwhelmed in a game like this. That's just the nature of D&D systems, they are really complex and Pathfinder is no different. Fortunately, Wrath of the Righteous does a pretty good job with the user interface. Every sub-page of this menu presents the most important information in the center of the screen, which is a great design decision. It's a really convenient way of designing the user interface if you think about it. People who know what to expect from Pathfinder D&D system can basically plan out their entire build right from the start. New players have useful tips and recommended builds for each class, which is really useful if you don't want to make your life more complicated as a beginner. There are just an insane amount of options for all classes and it's not so hard to understand the main gist of it. I wouldn't worry too much about the complexity of the class you choose if you're a new player. You will learn a lot of things as you play and that can be a really satisfying experience. Or in some cases frustrating, but you'll do just fine, trust me. We could talk about the character creation system all day because it's insanely deep, but we have to move on. Before you start the game you have one more choice to make and that's the difficulty setting. You actually have to do this before you start making your character. There are 7 difficulties for you to choose from, not counting the custom option. I personally went with daring difficulty, but I think I'm going to switch it to core when I continue playing. And yeah, just so you know, you can change the difficulty in the middle of your playthrough. I wanted to start on the core difficulty, but the game recommends not doing so if you're not familiar with the Pathfinder system. And like I said before, I didn't play Pathfinder Kingmaker, so I didn't want to go crazy. However, after I got a good grip of how everything works, I'm confident enough to try the core difficulty. But this doesn't mean I wasn't challenged at all on the daring difficulty. Pretty much every important fight in the game so far required me to think about every move I make. Make every strike count. And speaking of moves, beside the real time with pause, the game also has a turn based system. You can switch between turn based and real time whenever you want, but I prefer sticking with real time with pause. That's because I'm not a huge fan of turn based gameplay in general. We'll get to the gameplay a bit later though. Let's talk about the story and the setting. Hey, hey, stay with me. You actually got pretty lucky. You fell down into a black hole. But at least you're not on your own. You've got a great companion. Wrath of the Righteous story actually has a pretty simple premise, but the lore behind it is very rich. The game begins in a city of Kenabres. Your character arrives there in a pretty rough shape with a hole in his chest. The hole in the chest part is really important for the story and as you progress through the game, you will learn more about it. Anyway, after some nice people of the city healed you, and by nice people I mean this girl which is actually a dragon, you get your first quest. Have fun. You actually arrived in the middle of the festival, so why not? Well, that wasn't expected at all. The demons from hell quickly ruin your fun. 
a very powerful demon called Descari is leading the attack on the city and your level 1 character tries to take him out with a crossbow in a cutscene. Yeah, that's going to work. To be fair, that's actually my fault. The game is not wasting your time at all in the beginning, which I really like. It turns out that demon attack was very surprising because people in the city were supposed to be safe. A powerful artifact called Wardstone is responsible for keeping the demons far away from the city. Not just in Canabras, a lot of major cities have these Wardstones to protect them. However, the Wardstone in Canabras somehow got corrupted. Saying anything more than that would be a spoiler. Like I said, the premise of the story is very simple. Stop the demons from destroying the Wardstones. On the other hand, the lore is insanely deep. You have a ton of optional pieces of lore for every major character, place or event that happen in the world. And that's presented by a different color in the dialogue which opens up a sub-menu. If you played any recent CRPG, this feature is nothing new. But it's a great feature that makes it easier to get informed about the lore and the story, a lot easier compared to older CRPGs. Anyway, if you don't know anything about this universe like myself, it's easy to get lost while reading everything that you can. This is a personal problem of mine because I want to know as much as possible if I get invested in a game. I would occasionally read the same thing in different dialogue situations and only realize that somewhere in the middle of the text. I don't know if this is because there is tons of written lore in the dialogue sections or I'm just losing my focus. More importantly, I think the lore itself is really interesting. I wouldn't care too much about the lore if the characters were boring. You can have a good story without good characters. Wrath of the Righteous has very memorable characters. Even though most of them have a stereotypical D&D profile, their personal background and personas are very interesting. I think Ember is my personal favorite so far, she's very interesting and weird. It's all up to you when it comes to your party, you can choose who to bring with you as you meet more characters along the way. There are a lot of choices to be made, even in the beginning hours. Not just when it comes to your party selection, but for quests as well. As you can see here, I failed a couple of them already. The main fail condition for most quests is when the chapter is ending. This adds a little bit of urgency when it comes to quests, which is interesting. But you don't have an actual timer for the quests, so don't worry about that. I decided to play my warrior as neutral as possible in most situations, with occasionally selecting good or lawful actions. Do I even have to mention that you have a ton of skill checks in dialogues and on the map as well? Well, you do, and you also have 9 unique mythic paths that will alter your decisions. I'm following the angel mythic path because I'm a little angel of course. If you don't like reading, you might have a problem with this game because you'll have to read a lot. There is voice acting of course, and it's pretty good in general, but only a selected amount of dialogue lines are actually voice acted. It's not surprising at all because there is a ton of dialogue lines in the game. The demons have long laid siege to Canabras, but this time, their lord Descari appeared in the flesh. I really want to start talking about the gameplay, so let's do it. The combat feels really visceral, which is not something that I expected. <laughs> I don't know why, because it fits perfectly within the setting. I mean, slaying a bunch of demons should always feel visceral. Enemies can explode upon death and sometimes they even fly off the screen. Great sound effects make this feeling even better. Almost every encounter in the game is like this and I absolutely love it. The gameplay itself is exactly what you would expect in a well-built CRPG. You try to utilize your whole party in the best way possible, depending on the situation. The amount of strategy you need in fights is obviously dependent on the difficulty setting. I was playing on the daring difficulty and like I said before, every bigger fight required me to think. However, a lot of regular fights that you're going to have on this difficulty are not that challenging. But that just in the first 3 or 4 hours in the game, I actually started to feel a noticeable difficulty spike after that in basically every fight. So I found myself pausing the game a lot more and issuing commands to every character. Speaking of difficulty, you will find some optional fights in the game which are always pretty challenging regardless of your difficulty setting and this is highly appreciated. Just sit here. Don't worry about me. When it comes to quests, I already had a couple of nail-biting situations in some major set pieces. I was basically pausing the game like crazy every couple of seconds. So even though I played in real time with pause, it felt like I was using the turn-based option. Speaking of that, I definitely think that playing in turn-based mode is a bit easier to manage. 
Anyway, the way you organize your party is obviously really important. And by default, everyone except your main character is leveling up automatically with recommended builds. You still need to go through the menus when you level up though, and you have the option to level them up manually if that's what you wish. But I only recommend that if you truly know what you're doing. I didn't have a lot of problems to learn how most of the spells and abilities work by just experimenting in fights. And the game does a good job to show you when you're doing something that's redundant or just plain stupid. Hints can be annoying in a lot of games, but in CRPGs they can be a blessing, so I recommend keeping them on, at least for some time. The way my brain works when it comes to any form of strategy gameplay is actually very simple. I only start changing things around if I hit a brick wall and I can't progress further. But I also like to have a defined strategy for every fight before it starts. And speaking of that, the game will automatically pause before every fight. You can check out the stats of your enemies and try to plan out your strategy before the fights. There is a fog of war which prevents you from seeing the full map when you're exploring. If you're a veteran of CRPGs, you're probably going to use at least one character with high stealth skill to scout the surroundings. But even if you don't, you can still avoid aggroing the enemies by moving carefully on the map. I'm not that careful or patient when I'm moving on the map though. So to sum up my impressions about the combat, the fights are definitely enjoyable and challenging. The game takes some time to start challenging you on this difficulty, but that's actually good because it gives the new players time to adapt to Pathfinder's extensive system. You have to think about your every move, as you should, the combat feels visceral and sound effects are great. The only minor complaint I have is the visual clearance. There are some rare occasions where it's really hard to see what's going on on the screen. Things can get a bit muddy with characters on top of each other along with all the visual effects in fights. Now let's talk about some other gameplay features. Every major area that you're going to explore has multiple paths. You're usually free to explore the map in a non-linear way. Maps are full of various skill checks which you'll need to pass or fail and suffer the consequences. But not just that, you can also interact with the environment and gain the advantage in some fights, which I usually figure out at the end of the damn fight. When it comes to the non-combat interaction on the map, you will find a lot of lore-related stuff, as well as hints for the quests in that area. Now, if you're watching my RPG discussion videos, you probably know that I hold visual progression in RPGs in high regard. Wrath of the Righteous does an amazing job with this. Almost every piece of gear that you can equip on your character will change your appearance. Even the damn potions, which is kinda crazy. There's a ton of items to loot after every fight and behind every corner. Just your regular RPG stuff. You will need to pay attention to the type of weapon you're using against some enemies because they have a high damage reduction stat or DR for short. That's just one of the important combat stats which you'll have to keep in mind. Better quality items seem to be fairly hard to obtain by exploring, but not impossible. You can also buy some high quality gear from one of the first merchants for quite a hefty price though. So you know how this works, loot everything you can and sell all the junk. But I can't properly judge the itemization in the game yet, I'll need to invest a lot more hours. The last thing I want to mention when it comes to the gameplay is Defender's Heart, which is basically your hub area in the game. You will spend a lot of time here for various reasons, either to continue the main quest, talk to all the characters or buy and sell stuff. You'll go back and forth a lot, which can be a bit annoying because of the random encounters. But I'm pretty sure you can reduce the chance for random encounters by having a high stealth character. I was never a fan of random encounters in general, so I'm probably gonna do that. The only thing I haven't mentioned yet is the graphics and the performance, I guess. You should already have an opinion about the visuals after watching almost the entire video. I think the game is pleasant to look at in general and for an isometric RPG it looks pretty decent. You know you can't expect some mind-blowing graphical fidelity in these types of games, it's not what they are about. I was playing on the high settings and the performance wasn't that great. What's funny about that, a new patch came out just as I was writing this part of the script. So I started a new game again just to test out the performance because I had a lot of frame drops in the beginning of the game. And it seems like the new patch completely eliminated those performance issues, the game runs a lot smoother. I was not surprised or worried about the performance before the patch because pre-released versions for content creators are usually not that optimized. By the way, I highly recommend turning off the bloom effect because I think the game looks a lot better without it. I don't like this effect in general, not just in this game. Anyway guys, I think that would conclude my first impressions. 
Like I said, I'll be working on a couple of more videos about this game, so stick around if you want to see that. Don't forget to use my link in the description if you want to buy Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous on Steam. Tell me your opinion about the game in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more RPG contents. If you want to support the channel in the long run, consider becoming a Patreon or a YouTube member. You can get your name on the end credits as well as some other perks like early access to videos, Discord roles, my plans for future content, etc. etc. That will be all and I'll see you in the next one.